If you can appreciate that the foundational structure of a roof significantly contributes to the functionality and the aesthetics of a roof, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, Sonica here from Mali Roofing. In today's video, we will cover the last but most important steps before we can start tiling a roof. We will look at how to fix roof patterns, how to secure a valley tray, and how to fix a hip tree. On the topic of patterns, in the previous video, we covered how to measure and calculate even batten spacing. If you've missed that video and you'd like to view it, you can click here. We've included timestamps in this video. So should there be bits that you want to skip ahead to, please feel free to do so. Before we continue with today's video, just a special thanks to Prava, the Professional Roof Repair and Waterproofing Association of South Africa, where this video will be shot. If you'd like to find out more about Prava and all the good work they do to uplift the skills of people in our industry, click on the link in the description below. As mentioned in our first video, all battens should be graded SA Pine complying with SABS 653 and take the time to select straight battens to avoid uneven dips or wavy tile rows. Minimum batten sections to be used of rafter centers up to 760mm is a 38 by 38mm batten. Battens should be of a sufficient length and supported at each end and should span over a total of at least 3 rafters. To join battens, joints must be cut diagonally over a rafter and both ends nailed individually. For vertical hips, steep pitches above 45 degrees or if Marley's dry reach system is used, additional battens must be fixed on top of the hip rafter to form a hip tree of sufficient height to permit mechanical fixing of hip tiles. Monera explains. Um, I've noticed that you've come over to the hip now, looking at this pattern. Um, because I thought that we are going to start with uh, the pattern at the at the ridge. So why have you moved to this pattern and what's so important about this pattern? Yeah, the reason for us starting with this uh, 38 by 76 is that we're going to use this as our double pattern system for the hip as well, for the dry ridging. So when you say double pattern system? Yeah, what you normally use is actually the uh, a, a ridge tree. Yes. But because we use it on a hip here, we're going to use the 76 by 38. Basically, that's giving you the two double pattern system for 38 by 38. Oh, yes. I see. Oh, and the purpose of that is to, uh, so I understand it's to basically make sure that your ridge tile rests nicely on top of, of the rest of your tiles. That is correct. And it's going to give you one straight line. And the, also the reason why we're starting with this is that uh, we just want to measure out all the patterns because it's going to be fixed against this one here. Oh, I see. It's going to basically butt up against That this. is correct, yes. Oh, I understand. Yes. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get going passing this. In terms of the hip tree itself, we recommend fastening by means of screwing, ensuring a sufficient length to penetrate the batten by at least 40 millimeters. After having established the position of the apex batten and the first tiling batten, proceed with marking the batten centers onto the underlay of the rafters to ensure horizontal alignment. This can be done with the use of chalk lines that are struck horizontally so that the battens can then be fixed accurately. It is also worth checking horizontal alignment at regular intervals to ensure everything is truly level and even or the use of a batten spacer made to the required batten spacing is also a helpful tool. It is important to ensure that the nails used for fixing battens are durable under the exposed conditions of exposure. In coastal areas, all nails or any other fixing components must be corrosion resistant. The minimum recommended nails for a 38 by 38 mm batten is a 75 mm cut or wire nail and a 90 mm nail of the same specification for a 38 by 50 mm batten. All nails should have a diameter of at least 3.35 mm. If Marley's dry ridge system will be used, it is best to use a 75mm screw on the apex batten, as this batten would need to be removed and refitted once the ridge batten height has been established. 
Birch counter battens must be at least 38 mm by 50 mm fitted on edge to the ends of the tiling battens at the roof ends and must be fixed level with the top edge of the tiling battens for all Mali profiles. Though the deeply contoured Mali Monarch must be fixed level with the bottom edge of the tiling battens. Please note that tiling battens should only be cut after the roof tiles have been laid out and only then the verge counter battens can be fitted. Before fixing the valley tray, measure the full length of the valley required and trim back the tray to the required shape at the ridge and eave using tin snips. Richard explains why cleats are used to secure and spread the valley liner. Hey Richard! Hi Mimi. What is it that you are going to do now? Uh, I'm going to uh, fasten the valley, the roll top flashing with the cleats. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and is there a reason why you are using cleats? Uh, to, to tighten it. And because if you use the nail, you can make holes on it on the base. Yes, yes. So you have to use the cleats to hook the valley and then you put it on the trussels, uh, on the button. Yes. So you don't need to, 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 to put the nail on the, on the flashing because the water, when it overflows, Yes. over that it's gonna go in on that nail. Yes. So because the right way to do it is to put the clip yes. and you nail it like that. He also explains the exception of using nails on the valley liner. Uh, why you put a nail? It is because you want to uh, tighten, to fasten the veil, not to slide in not to, to, to go out or whatever you can. So you make it tight. So the cleat is to protect, to, to, to stretch the valley to the side, to make it in between of the valley section. So that's all for the cleat. That concludes our last video on roof substructure within our How to Tile a Roof series. If you enjoyed today's video, Please like, subscribe and comment as we'd love to hear from you. But that's it for today's video. See you in the next one.